Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Trading Chief. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I cover biopharmaceutical stocks that have upcoming FDA reviews on uh, new drug applications and biologics license applications. And I also cover uh, upcoming stock mergers. So, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Verica Pharmaceuticals, or ticker VRCA. And just a quick little overview this is uh, Verica. Verica Pharmaceuticals Incorporated is a dermatology therapeutics company which engages in identifying, developing, and commercializing pharmaceutical products for the treatment of, the, of skin diseases. Its products include Pipeline VP102, Pipeline VP103, and Pipeline VP315. And um, I pulled up their website just so we can kind of look at their, their pipeline that they got right here. And as you can see, the Molluscum Contagiosum, that's the one we're going to be looking at, uh, actually has a PADUFA date now of 23 July. Um, and they're calling this one Why Can't. So, just wanted to give you a, I always like to show the pipeline um, in, on their website just so we can see what they have going on, what they have coming up. As you can see, they also got two phase threes that will be done later this year. But let's go back to it. And uh, I kind of want to go over the news articles because this one, I, I would be very cautious with buying into this stock. Uh, and the reason why is because this thing has had three CRLs in the past. And, and it's nothing to do with Verica's drug. It's the partnered, um, I don't know what you want to call them, manufacturer or distri distributor. I don't know. But... It's their partner distributor or manufacturer company that's that keeps causing them the issues. So the first first news article I want to look at is from uh, 714 of 2020. And this is the FDA turns away Verica's NDA for VP102 and Molluscum Contagiosum. So let's take a look and see what it says. And remember, this is, this is the first time that, that they were uh, turned away. And it says... Um, Verica Pharmaceuticals on Tuesday said the U.S. Food and Drug Administration indicated that it won't approve the company's new drug application for VP102 for the skin disease molluscum contagiosum in its current form. The Westchester PA Medical uh, Dermatology Company said it received a complete response letter from the agency seeking additional information regarding certain aspects of the chemistry, manufacturing, and controls process of the drug device combination as well as human factors validation. Verica noted that the FDA didn't identify any clinical safety or efficiency issues, and the company said it plans to request a meeting with the agency to discuss the steps needed for resubmission of the application. We are conf uh, confident that we can work closely with the FDA to fully address the issues raised in the letter, and we continue to believe VP102 remains viable for FDA approval. Uh, Verica last month had said it had received a letter from the FDA in which the agency noted the deficiencies that precluded discussion of labeling and post-marketing requirements and comments. So that's the first one back in 2020. And the next news article I want to look at is from 9 or September 24th. And I got to look because I think I wrote the year. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I wrote the year wrong. We're going to look at September 20th of 2021. I wrote the date down wrong. And it says, Verica Pharmaceutical shares are trading lower after the company announced it received a complete response letter from the FDA identifying deficiencies at a facility of a contract manufacturer. So this is the second time that the C they received a CRL. It says, Verica Pharmaceutical shares are trading lower after the company announced it received a complete response letter from the FDA identifying deficiencies at a, at a facility of a contract manufacturer for its new drug application for VP-102 for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum. And then the third time, we're going to go and look at uh, May 24th of 2022. May 24th, 2022. This is 
Verica receives a complete response letter from the FDA for its NDA for VP102 as a direct result of deficiencies at general reinspection of Sterling Pharmaceutical Services. So, Sterling Pharmaceutical Services is the con the the contracted manufacturer slash distributor that Verica is working with, and this is the second time that they have failed uh, an inspection with the FDA. Just my opinion, I or if it was me, I would have cut ties and found a new manufacturer <laughs> to work with. Um, so let's see what see what they did. So Verica has been advised that PAI pre-approval inspection was conducted at Sterling and is not aware of any reported observations related to the PAI of VP102 operations. Review division had advised Verica that the review of NDA was completed and the label was ready to be uh, communicated except for Sterling's classif uh, classification status. Verica has been notified that Sterling is an OAI, OAI official action indicated status. Verica Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, a, term, uh, a dermatology therapeutics company developing med uh, medications for skin diseases requiring medical in in uh, interventions today announced that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration had issued a complete response letter regarding its new drug application for VP-102 for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum. The only deficiency listed in the CRL was related to the deficiency identified at a general reinspection of Sterling Pharmaceutical Services, the contract manufacturing organization that manufactured Verica's bulk solution drug product. Sterling advised Verica on May 20th, 2022 that it received notice that it is on OAI status. Sterling's OAI classification resulted from a week-long reinspection of the CMO conducted by FDA in February of 2022. The reinspection was conducted approximately 90 days after Sterling was originally classified by the agency as VAI, Voluntary Action Indicated, on November 17th of 2021. Verica understood that the VAI classification did not indicate that a reinspection was required. The CRL did not identify any other deficiencies and moreover none of the issues identified by the FDA during the reinspection were specific to the manufacturing of VP-102. Additionally, Verica was informed by the division that it had completed its review of Verica's NDA and product label. There were no open questions on the NDA review and the VP-102 label was ready to be communicated. However, Verica has been informed that the internal FDA Policy is preventing the agency from communicating the label and approving the NDA when a CMO has an unresolved classification status or is placed on OAI status. Based on the successful PAI of VP102 at Sterling and our understanding that the division was ready to communicate our label, we believe our NDA meets the statutory standards for approval and that any issues at Sterling do not impact the manufacturing quality, efficiency, or safety of VP-102, uh, said the Verica's president and chief executive officer. However, we recognize that the dermatology division hands may be tied due to the reinspection issues at Sterling and thank them for their efforts working with us to date. In addition, VP-102 is a non-sterile topical dermatology product that is not systemically absorbed. It is completely solvent based on our base and has been demonstrated to have uh, bactericidal and varicidal properties. By comparison, the observations cited at Sterling, which led to its OAI classification status, were predominantly related to its distinct sterile operations where high or higher risk sterile ophthalmic products are manufactured by Sterling for, among other distributors, the U.S. government. Oh crap, that's a lot to read. Um, anyway, you can go back and read this. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we'll be here for probably another 
25 minutes if I did that. Uh, I'll go over this next part just because it's talking about the FDA, and then, then we'll stop there, and I'll go to the last the last uh, news article. It says, the FDA previously issued a CRL for Verica's NDA for VP102 on September 16th, 2021, citing it in part a deficiency related to the agency's general inspection of sterling, likewise not specifically related to the manufacturing of VP102. Following the CRL, the FDA classified sterling as VAI, the establishment Inspection report uh, issued on November 17th, 21. In connection with the VAI, specifically stated that FDA would not take or recommend regulatory or enforcement action against Sterling. The VAI classification would not directly negatively impact FDA's assessment of any pending marketing application referencing Sterling, and approval of any application may depend on APAI. So that's all of that. Next news article we're going to look at is from January 24th. Scroll all the way up here. Had a lot of news articles drop. says, Verica Pharmaceuticals announced its recent mission of new drug application for VP-102 for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum. Potential first FDA-approved therapy for treatment of molluscum contagiosum. So that's that's the big news on it. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that it would be approved so that it will pop off of this. And then uh, prevalence of over 6 million molluscum contagiosum patients in the U.S. alone. So that's quite a lot. Verica Pharmaceuticals, a dermatology therapeutics company developing medications for skin diseases requiring medical interventions, today announced that it has resubmitted the new drug application NDA for VP102 for the, for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Since we are pleased with the hard work and commitment from the entire Verica team that has allowed us to resubmit the NDA for VP102 for molluscum. We believe the successful tech transfer of our bulk solution manufacturing addresses the only deficiency in our previous filing that resulted in our complete response letter last year. We look forward to working with the FDA through the review process and if approved, bringing VP102 to patients as the first FDA approved treatment option for molluscum. So. I don't know, they, this is successful tech transfer of our bulk solution manufacturing addresses. I don't I don't know if that means that they transferred the manufacturer off of Sterling. I hope they did, especially if they've already been burned by them twice. Um, yeah, I don't say that, I don't say anything in here, but I mean, that would give them a better opportunity of it getting approved if that's the case. And then the last news article I want to look at is from February 27th, which is right here. I just passed it. And it says, Verica Pharmaceutical announces FDA acceptance of filing of resubmitted NDA for VP-102 for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum. It says, VP-102 is a cantharidian uh, topical solution. could potentially be the first FDA-approved treatment for molluscum contagiosum. A highly contagious viral skin infection affecting approximately 6 million people in the United States, primarily children. Uh, this is Verica Pharmaceuticals, a dermatology therapeutics company developing medications for skin diseases requiring medical interventions. Today announced that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration accepted for filing the company's resubmitted new drug application for VP102 for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum and assigned a Prescription Drug User Fee Act goal date of July 23rd of 2023. It says, we are pleased that the FDA has accepted the file, accepted for filing our NDA resubmission for VP-102, said the Vice President and Chief Executive Officer. With no FDA approval treatments from Lescom, the filing acceptance for our NDA brings us one step closer towards providing a safe and effective therapeutic treatment option for the millions of patients in the United States with molluscum. VP-102 has been designed for a reliable and targeted administration of 
Kenneth Ardian through a unique topical GMP controlled formulation through a single use applicator. Based upon the strong safety and efficiency results from our phase from our two phase three clinical trials, we believe that VP102 has the potential to offer an important new treatment option for molluscum. I, I looked because I always like to show the phase three um, data, but I couldn't find the phase three data in any of the, in, in the news. And I went all the way back to 2018. Uh, it's just not there. So I don't know if this came from another company um, initially, like uh, GSK did when I when I did my video on it. Um, but I haven't been able to find that one as of yet. So uh, I don't know. That's that's pretty much all I got. So I I. I think it'll be approved this time, but I again I would say be cautious over it because uh, of its many many CRLs that it's already had, um, and I think that's all I got. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and come check us out in the Discord, where you can come bounce ideas off of me and get all this information prior to these videos going up. So uh, that's all I got. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Have a good night.